Arducam is at it again with more camera innovation for the Raspberry Pi. This time, it's the 64 megapixel Hawkeye camera module. And spoiler alert, it's pretty awesome. Arducam sent me this product to review for free in return for a fair and honest review, but I am not at all affiliated with Arducam, and the opinions expressed in this video are mine and mine alone. I used the Hawkeye to build this Frankentraption, and I'll cover the details of this monstrosity later on in this video. Unboxing is simple, as it just includes the camera and the ribbon cable. I'll be doing my testing with a Raspberry Pi 4, and physical setup of this camera is very straightforward. Just plug the ribbon cable of the camera into the Pi's camera port, making sure that the blue side of the cable faces the Ethernet port side of the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so this is the PDF document that has the instructions for setup for this camera provided by Arducam. I've got it open here, and we're just going to go through and uh, follow the instructions in this document to get the camera set up. Uh, the first step here says do a fresh install of Raspberry Pi OS, highly recommended. This is the link to that OS. I've already done this step. We're on the OS right now, so we're going to skip ahead to the next part, which is just a lot of copying and pasting these commands into a terminal window. And it should be a pretty straightforward setup to get the camera up and going. And if I did everything right, this should give us the moment of truth here. Okay, so we do have a an image here. I don't have any lights on in here right now, so let me flip on some lights and we'll take a look at this. But it is indeed working. Okay, so we do have some lights here. Uh, definitely out of focus. Um, I did see in the instructions here that we can enable continuous autofocus by adding dash dash continue dash autofocus. I'm going to give that a shot. Now it does say here that this is a super early scratch version. We haven't tested its usability slash performance yet, but I'm going to give it a try. Whoa, <laughs> that works out pretty good. I mean, I've got it. It's dark in here. I don't have a lot of lighting uh, turned on right now. Um, but the image does look fairly crisp. I don't have this set up in the best position right now. I've got everything just kind of set up really super jank right now. Um, but it does say that it has continuous autofocus. I'm going to try that out now. I'm going to block my face out and see if this picks up. No. Okay, so it does not appear that the autofocus is continuous. That's okay. It did say that it was not fully uh, done yet. Um, I've got the viewfinder width and viewfinder height set at the recommended settings here. And it says that we've done numerous tests to find the, the most well-balanced preview resolution for this camera sets at... Uh, 2312 by 1736. Pretty decent quality with the best performance. And taking a picture with autofocus enabled. Great job. And as you can see, there is an insane amount of detail in the pictures. We can really appreciate how much the camera captures when we zoom in on the images. And here's a video segment where I play around with the autofocus. I've set up a fan, keyboard, and an old analog video switcher at different focal points for this test. And in my test, it would seem that the minimum focal distance is at least 3 inches. I couldn't get the camera to focus on anything within two inches or less. Right now I'm running the commands to do a manual control of this camera. And the lower you set the step, the more fine control you have. And the higher you set the step, the quicker the uh, manual focus is going to respond. So I'm going to set it at a step of one, and we're going to see how slowly but fine the uh, autofocus or the uh, manual focus controls. 
And we've got, you know, we can tune in with laser precision there and really dial in the focus very tightly. I'm going to quit out of that. And uh, now I'm going to set the focus step to 50. And you'll see that uh, we've got a much uh, faster control of the focus, but it's not as as fine-tuned as it is when we set it at a focus step of 1. And here are a few more manual focus tests. Again, I've used a fan, keyboard, and analog video switcher for different focal lengths. The amount of control that we have over the manual focus capability of the camera is very impressive. And here I'm going to do a quick recording in 1080, and we're going to see what the video looks like. There most likely won't be any sound in the video. I'm going to wave this yellow uh, level around so that we've got some separation of color, and we can see what the video looks like. But here goes. And now I'm going to perform that same test in 720. So I figured if I just took a bunch of pictures from my desk with this camera, it would make for a pretty boring video. So I cobbled this together. It's a USB battery with the uh, Raspberry Pi 4 strapped to it with a couple of rubber bands and the camera just on an L bracket. I didn't want to lug around a keyboard, mouse, and monitor to uh, take pictures with this out in nature. So I set up RASP controller and it's controlling this via my phone over an ad hoc Wi-Fi connection. It's not the most user-friendly setup, but it does get the job done. I can point this at something and then send a command via SSH uh, with my phone, and I am pretty much shooting blind. There is a uh, camera control through a uh, lib camera here, but if I use that, I can only snap a five megapixel camera, uh, a five megapixel pixel picture with this camera. So what I've done is I've written a custom user command that I can. It's just called snap a pic. And when I hit that, the, uh, it'll send a command to the Raspberry Pi to take a picture at full resolution with this camera. I'm going to test that out now with a selfie. But what this will allow me to do is have the epitome of a true point and shoot. I'm going to be pointing this thing at uh, various objects, sending the command. It's going to autofocus, hopefully and take some pictures and I'll review everything when I get back home uh, but this is like I said a easier way of dealing with this thing rather than bringing out a monitor mouse and a keyboard I can control everything with my phone so let's see how it works out so overall I think the pictures that I took look pretty fantastic from a technical perspective Autofocus didn't always grab everything that I wanted the camera to focus on, but I believe that has a lot more to do with me shooting blind than the limitation of the camera. I believe the functionality is there to make it work flawlessly, at least most of the time, with a better setup than what I've done here. And like I said, the detail in the photos is impressive, especially when we zoom in. I'm going to let these photos speak for themselves with a slideshow as I finish up the video, and I'll meet you at the end with my final thoughts.
Before I wrap up, I do want to give some credit where credit is due. The documentation that I got from ArduCam was a bit thin, and when I started making this video, I actually referred to a video by Lee PSP Video. His video has every command that you could possibly want in his video description, and his video is a much more in-depth deep dive on this camera. I'll be linking his video in the description and a pinned comment below. So if you're really interested in this camera, I highly recommend checking out his video on this device. So as for my final thoughts on this camera, well, as I already mentioned, I'm blown away by the image quality. And beyond using the camera to supplement other Raspberry Pi projects, I think this is a camera that is actually worth using for real as a standalone daily use camera. Don't get me wrong, there are a lot of cool projects out there where people have built their own camera using a Raspberry Pi and camera module, but I get the idea that those have always been projects for the sake of doing the project and not having a camera that would actually be used after the novelty of the project wears off. This is actually the best camera for the Raspberry Pi that I've seen so far, and I could totally see a company building a camera-shaped case along with program buttons, a trim down interface geared specifically towards using the Pi as a camera, and if you are indeed looking for a top quality camera to supplement another Raspberry Pi project that is dependent on a camera, you're not going to beat this one. It's crazy to speculate where Raspberry Pi cameras will be and what they'll be capable of in five or 10 years from now. And if you want this camera, you can get it now for 60 bucks from ArduCam's website. I'll put a link in the description, but that's it for this one. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.